Hi, Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luther again. Uh, today, uh, I'm working on a top. I've shown this top in a previous video. Um, and just, I guess, for your edification, uh, this is Sitka Spruce. It is a lowly 2A grade top. As many of you may have gathered by now, uh, grade doesn't mean as nearly as much to me as it does to some. Um, but what I want to show you with this top is just some interesting things that might uh, might help some of the newer builders as you're working along. Um, I've got this top responding right now at 191 hertz. And what's interesting about this to me is that as the pitch has dropped, uh, the which is normal when you're going to carve braces, you're removing mass. Uh, the response is going to drop in pitch. But what's also interesting is that the sustain increases. Now, I guess I should have shown you this top and done this quick demonstration before I carved any of the bracing. But I didn't think of doing that. So you'll have to trust me when I say the sustain increases. If you try it in your own shop, you'll find out. It, it works. Um, but what's interesting about this top is something a little bit newer that I'm doing. For one thing, this is a newer body. This is a longer body. My intention here is to try and, and bring up the base a little bit, not so much bring it up in volume, but to, shall we say, strengthen it and get some of the higher partials out of it that should accompany it. And I'm doing that by lengthening the diaphragm itself. And I'm also doing it by slightly decreasing the size of the sound hole. But I'm also interested in a weird experiment. You're going to either laugh at this or you're going to say, what are you, nuts or what? Um, so I'm trying something a little bit different. And that is, uh, I want sustain and I want upper partials. So, yep, some of the cork sniffers are going to say you can't do that, although maybe they won't. But I have put in an aluminum bridge patch. Uh, yep, you might say that's crazy, and it might be for all I know. It's glued down with an industrial epoxy. Uh, it's obviously not wood glue and, of course, not cyanoacrylate. Um, but the other thing I want to report to you with this is that the braces are all quarter-inch brace. They are Sitka spruce. They are standing at a maximum height right here where I have this, uh, this brace over the joint. Can you see that? Um, they're standing right there at damn near five-eighths of an inch tall. But everything else is no more out here at the lower X. This is not quite, this is just about seven-sixteenths. I'm at three-eighths of an inch on my tone bars and not quite five-sixteenths out here on the finger braces. Um, the uppers are tapered away. There's no scalloping, of course. They're, they're just tapered away. And they are tapered to be at the same height as the scallop end of the upper cross strut. We're tapered out here to about a sixteenth of an inch thick at the, uh, the lower axis. We're tapered to zero here at the tone bars. We're tapered to zero at the finger braces. And the finger braces, I hope you can see this all right. I taper these back. Um, I leave them full height as far out as I can and taper them off. And then I begin tapping. And the sustain is one thing, but it's been my experience that that sustain increases quite noticeably as you move the peak of that ramp back toward the X brace. So those ramps are long and you notice that they're straight. I don't ski slope those. I keep those straight because I believe it was Richard Schneider that suggested that when you taper a brace out uh, straight, it has longer sustain. If you scallop it down to, to more of a flat and then uh, taper very slowly from there to zero, that tones will die away more quickly. He was pointing out a difference there between a classical and possibly a flamenco guitar. So working on that piece of advice, that's why I do that. So. What I started with when I started carving my braces was it tapped at F-sharp 365 hertz. 
And as I went through the iterations of scalloping, removing the sides and so on, what I've arrived at now is I am at uh, G flat F sharp three, 191 Hertz is where I'm at right now. Now it may drop slightly because everything is carved, but nothing is sanded. And I don't believe I want to go down any further with this. I'm, I'm at a point here where given what I want to do with a guitar, this is always going to have um, light gauge strings on it. And it's a, going to be a finger style instrument. So I'm not worried about brute strength and I'm not worried about flat pickers and even medium gauge strings. So there's where we are with this. I, I'll report back probably in another video at some point uh, showing progress on the instrument. But there's where we are. And sanding, as I said, may drop that pitch a little bit more, but I don't think so. But the sustain is increasing as I also drop in pitch. And to me, that's just as important. So there it is. Uh, hope you got something out of this. If you're a new builder, I hope this is encouraging or maybe gives you a direction to think about. Um, I have reported this in another video, but to find the pitches that I'm at, I'm just using an online tone generator. And if you look at the series I'm doing on building an acoustic bass, you'll see a demonstration of what I mean by that uh, tone generator and comparing uh, pitches. That's, that's all I'm using. It's not too scientific. It's uh, semi-scientific and, and sort of intuitive and eh, hope my ear is good enough. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something useful out of this and we'll see you again at the next video.